Hi everyone! In this video I'll be showing you how to use Room EQ Wizard to measure your speakers. The first thing to do is to go into the preferences and set your audio device. Now some of these settings will be different on a Mac. You'll want to make sure you have the driver set to ASIO, and then you'll want to select your specific audio interface here. you also want to make sure that the sample rate is what your system is set to. Then the next thing to do is set the output and input. You want to start with the left speaker, and then you'll want the input to be set to wherever your microphone is connected to. Now the next thing you'll want to do is click the measure button at the top left. You may get a window popping up asking about the SPL calibration, and you'll want to click continue anyways. Just keep in mind that the dBSPL levels shown by our double will not be correct, but that doesn't matter for the sake of these measurements. Now there are a couple of settings that you'll want to double check on here. Firstly, you'll want to make sure that the output and the input are the same as what you set in the preferences. Next, you can look at the start and end frequency. Normally I'll set this to 20 for smaller systems going up to 22k or just 20k. The level I normally leave at minus 12 dBFS. You could also do minus 20 dBFS. You just want to make sure you're not clipping your output. Now the next thing to do is set your speaker level. I normally recommend starting with a conservative value and then you can turn it up from there. You can click the check levels button here and it'll play some pink noise. You want the level to be fairly loud, but not so loud that you'd want to cover your ears. The next step is to set up your microphone. You'll want to place the microphone such that the capsule is roughly where the middle of your head would be and at ear height. Normally I point it straight forward such that it's pointing in the middle between the speakers. You also want to make sure that the microphone is on a stand. Jumping back into REW, you'll want to use the check levels again to set your mic input level. I normally like to have it hitting minus 20 dBFS or so, so click the check levels and then adjust your preamp gain until you're hitting around that level. After that, we're ready to go and start measuring. You want to hit start and then you'll hear the sweep. Once the measurement is done, the measure window will automatically close and REW will show you your measurement. In this case, I've loaded up the measurement that someone else sent me from an empty room, just so you can get a sense of what to expect before you've treated your room. The first thing I normally do is switch to the All SPL tab. This will show all the measurements you've taken. The next thing you'll want to do is go back to the measure window, change your output to the right speaker, and then run another measurement. You'll now see both measurements showing up here on the left. And you'll also see both lines here if you're on the All SPL tab. You'll notice that it's quite fuzzy up at the top, so what you'll probably want to do is go up to controls here, and then in where it says no smoothing, change that to 124 smoothing, and then click apply smoothing. This will smooth up the graphs and make it a little easier to see what's going on. You'll notice that the measurements I have open are labeled L and R. You'll want to select the default text that REW puts in here and change it to the correct speaker. If you have any extra measurements, you can click the red X here to delete them. After that, click Save All. You can leave this box empty and just hit OK, and then save that to wherever you'd like. This will include all measurements that you have open here. You don't have to save them all individually. While I won't be showing you how to analyze these measurements in depth, here are some quick things you can look at to get a sense of what's going on. Switching over to the Impulse tab and making sure you have percent selected here, You'll be able to easily see any early reflections that you have, and this might be from a desk or any other furniture that you have around you. Going over to the Spectrogram tab, this shows you the time that it takes for each frequency to decay. So any frequencies that are ringing out will show here, and they'll be longer. So for example, here at around 180, you can see that it rings out a little longer. And this would be a spot that you want to keep in mind while treating your space. Keep in mind that this is only looking at the measurement that you have selected over here on the left hand side. So if we want to look at the right speaker, we just click the right here, and you'll see that this window updated and now we're looking at the right speaker. I hope this video helps. Feel free to send me any questions you have.